When our community's lungs are over an attack, what do we do? Stand, Stand up! Fight back! When our community's lungs are under attack, what do we do? Stand up! Fight back! I'm not too far from the science center. We're from northeastern Connecticut. Hey, the corner isn't quiet. So, what is your group and why are you here today? We are trying to get people civically yeah. engaged in their government. What's the name of your group? Quiet Corner shouts with an exclamation point. We fight for the environment, uh, voters' rights, uh, social issues, um, environmental issues, yeah. and justice. Yeah. Injustices. Justice for all. And what are the things that you don't like about this proposed plan? Oh, it'll mess oh. up the environment. We don't need one. It'll mess up the environment. We have wind power coming on offshore very soon. Um, it's just a total mess. And Governor Lamont said he would run on clean energy. This is not clean energy. So we can't afford it. Killingly is a beautiful town and they're just exploiting it. I understand there's other power plants in the area. Yeah, there's another one right next to where this one is going up. Supposedly, we don't want this other one to go up. And one of the re several reasons is it's going to add to the to the um, heat in the atmosphere, adding to uh, uh, pushing forward the climate change, whether people want to recognize it as a real reality. It is the truth, a scientific truth that's happening. Also, this plant will take in water from the Quinnebog River and to help cool off things and whatnot. So therefore, there'll be water that's contaminated from this plant. And the other thing is, they're using frack gas that they're going to be shipping into that our part of the state. And in order to transport that frack gas, they have to take the pipes that already exist for the Algonquin pipeline and widen them to, uh, to accommodate this gas, which has, you know, it's, it's, it, because of its chemical um, composition, it, 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 it has more, it takes more space up in a pipe. So therefore, um, in regards to expanding pipes, construction on pipes, and there was a workshop several years ago by this company called Spectra, Spectra I think, they may have changed their name, but they're the same people providing this gas. And what they said in their presentation, they didn't speak about it, they had it all printed out. You had to read it or go home and read it online, which I did, I read their pamphlet online. So if they don't have enough space for all this gas once the Algonquin line gets uh, made to accommodate it, they have the power to take over property by eminent domain to put storage tanks on underground in people's property. This could possibly affect places with wide open space like the um, Audubon and Wyndham Land Trust. We're not certain, but we've heard some kind of rumors in the back of our mind that those areas are being targeted for possible land that they may need to, uh, to store this, uh, this gas. And we don't need this, this power plant. We have ac adequate power, power where we live. This is just going to be shipped off elsewhere, like when the Alaskan pipeline got built. That gas from the Alaskan pipeline was sold to Japan. It was brought forth as a, an idea that, oh, this is going to help the, the Americans get through the, uh, the crisis with energy. But it never did anything to benefit the, uh, the uh, Americans. All it did was make profit for the, um, the companies that sell gas and produce power. So that's a good reason why we oppose it, but primarily for the pollution and the harm to the environment. The environment has to come before profits. It has to come before people. Without a safe, clean earth, we don't exist. And what is the sentiment in the towns? I mean, what about political leaders? Did they oh, go along with it? Well, <laughs> that's a long story. I can't say for certain. I've been to many meetings of uh, the town council of Killingly and where uh, the signing council has been. This was going on several years ago. The feeling is that Killingly wanted this plant. They want it to, um, I could be wrong, you'll have to check that, but the feeling was going on into this, they welcomed it to help with the tax base, yep. to bring money, people money. in to work on this plant for several years, or who knows, people may want to relocate to work on this plant. But once the plant is built, 
the environment, all, everybody in the surrounding towns, people up in Massachusetts, people all over are going to breathe this air. It do, the air doesn't just belong to the Killingly and the Killingly Council who said, let's bring this in for business. The air belongs to all of us. And Northeastern Connecticut has the highest rate of asthma in the state of Connecticut. Right. You can look it up. And I'm a former nurse, I'm a retired nurse, and I'll tell you, there's nothing sadder than seeing children and adults suffer to try to breathe due to environmental hazards that we put out in the earth. So. So who, who did you say has the high, what part of the state has the highest rate? Northeastern Connecticut has the highest rate of upper respiratory problems such as asthma. It's been documented. New Haven has also claimed that, documented. So. Wow, you know, it's almost like when people uh, um, experience a tragedy and there's like a, a tug of war to say me me up my so let's put it, yeah let's put it this way it's horrible whoever has to experience you mentioned Massachusetts just a year or two ago there was explosions yes. in three towns yes. in gas yes and this these, these people at one of their meetings because I've been to several of the town hall meetings and whatnot and uh, about this plant and they're saying oh that they've got all these safety nets involved and you know that there won't be an explosion there won't be a, this and that. but you know that's what they said when they built Three Mile Island that's what they said when they built Fukushima and I'll tell you a story about Fukushima I have a friend who's passed away she was a nuclear physicist and it was said at her funeral by her rabbi. This is an honest, true story. She was over to Fukushima as a consultant before they even built the plant. She offered some suggestions to help make that plant sa safer. They totally ignored her. Being a woman, a woman in a field where there were hardly any men, uh, women doing that, except for Marie Curry, who got a Nobel Prize and all that. But so for the most part, the alarms are out. This is the canary in the in the in the in the in the cave, in the tunnel. We're sending out the information. It's better to be preventive than to allow for horrible things. We don't want what happened in Massachusetts, that horrible, tragic explosion, to happen out by our way, too. Thank you. You're welcome.